Throughout its 96 year history, the Detroit Zoo has made a name for itself with its innovative exhibit designs. While not all the zoo's habitats are groundbreaking anymore, most of them were ahead of their time when they were constructed, but none have made a bigger lasting impact than the Arctic Ring of Life. Opening in 2001, settled within the heart of the Detroit Zoo, this four-acre complex set the new standard for captive polar bear care and exhibitry. At a time when most zoo polar bears were still living in simple grottos, the Detroit Zoo went above and beyond to recreate three separate environments that polar bears inhabit in the wild. Join me in experiencing one of the zoo world's greatest creations. While it is possible to enter the Arctic Ring of Life several different ways, we'll be beginning from the intended main entrance located behind the zoo's main restaurant. Within just a few steps, the first habitat is already in view. But from experience, on most occasions, you'll have to keep moving before you see its inhabitants. Before we get to them, I'd like to mention that On This Spot was originally an exhibit for Arctic Foxes, which was removed in 2022, providing additional viewing of the grassy tundra, the typical summer habitat of the polar bear. While some polar bears have access to icy hunting grounds year-round, many live in regions with only seasonal ice flows. For them, with the limited prey available, summer is a time for fasting and relaxation to conserve energy. Placed in between the viewpoints of the tundra are signs that educate about different elements of the Arctic world, as well as several towering Inukshuks, Inuit rock structures used as navigational guides, and even the opportunity to walk under a whalebone framed lodge leading to yet more vantage points of the over 29,000 square foot tundra yard. The last of which offers the best view of the bear's 30,000 gallon freshwater pool. With that, we're saying goodbye to the summer landscape, but our journey through the Arctic is just beginning. The pathway is sheltered by tall grasses and high rock walls as we approach our first look into Arctic waters. A rocky haul-out beach attached to a 100,000 gallon saltwater pool that was originally home to seals, but several years ago the seals left, making the way for southern sea otters. These adorable mustelids are a keystone species for their native kelp forest. Sea otters feed on urchins, which uproot the kelp these underground forests are named for. The otters also use the kelp by wrapping it around themselves to stay anchored in place while resting. Sea otters also have hidden pouches under their forelimbs for storing food, and are one of the few non-primate animals to use tools, in the form of rocks, which they use to crack open harder food items. Detroit originally welcomed two California rescues in June of 2021. Female Ollie was found stranded in 2010 when she was just two weeks old, while the younger male Monty was found and rescued at just a day old in 2020. Last year, this duo was joined by a third rescue, again from California, who was named Finn. The three lived together for around eight months before Ollie unfortunately passed away recently at the age of 13. Now that we've reached the Arctic coast, we'll be taking this voyage under the sea. But first you're welcomed by a beautiful tile mural into the minimally interpreted Nunavut Gallery, which features simple displays of sculptures and paintings relating to Inuit mythology. Within the gallery are two more standard underwater viewing windows, one for the bears and one for the sea otters, where they can show off their dives, which can last for up to 5 minutes and reach depths of 300 feet. As soon as you enter the Nunavut Gallery, you're drawn to the light from this tunnel.
The Polar Passage, a 70-foot-long acrylic tunnel where visitors are surrounded on three sides by the open Arctic Sea, inhabited by the sea otters and periodically visited by swimming polar bears. While the predator-prey dynamic doesn't make as much sense with the sea otters, the Polar Passage still does a remarkable job blending the boundaries of where the bear's water ends and the otter's begins. While the tunnel is captivating even without the animals, nothing quite compares to the opportunity to have a polar bear walk above your head, which is exactly what the Polar Passage was designed to do, to make an emotional impact from the visual of being beneath a polar bear in the water. And having experienced it for myself, I can confidently say it is among the greatest zoo experiences you can ever have. Through the simulated ice cave, you're taken back outside, where the pathway climbs again, bringing you to the Exploration Station, an Arctic research outpost that offers live camps of both polar bear habitats to help you figure out where the bears might be hanging out. There's also thermal imaging displays and a bubble window overlooking the Polar Passage Tunnel, although I've yet to personally see the otters make use of this water space. Finally, the biggest reason to come in here is a split level above and underwater viewing of the polar bears, more reminiscent of what can be found at many polar bear exhibits around the country. Outside once more, our Arctic voyage is coming to an end, but before we say goodbye to the icy north, you're offered a more complete panoramic view of the pack ice exhibit, meant to replicate a polar bear's wintertime environment. In winter and spring, the Arctic sea ice offers polar bears with expansive hunting grounds. Spring is particularly bountiful as the seals spend more time on the ice to give birth and raise their pups. The Detroit Zoo is currently home to two polar bears, but in the past few years, I've had the opportunity to see four different polar bears who have called the Arctic Ring of Life home. First is Anana, a female who moved to Detroit from the Cincinnati Zoo in 2020, she got to enjoy her new home for almost exactly a year before sadly passing away in February 2021. While her time in Detroit was short, it was noteworthy for me personally since she was the first polar bear I actually saw at the Detroit Zoo after failing to see one on five consecutive visits that spanned nine years. Next, there's Astra, who was born here in Detroit in late 2020. She, along with her twin sister, Lerke, were the first successful litter of cubs at the zoo since 2004. While Astra was raised by her mother, soon after birth, Lerke appeared weak, so the Detroit Zoo staff acted quickly, offering around-the-clock care, ensuring her survival. While I never actually saw Lerke during her time in Detroit, she was joined for a time by a rescued grizzly bear cub named Jebby before outgrowing this playmate and eventually being reunited with her sister in 2023, shortly after which the pair moved together to the Point Defiant Zoo. Which brings us to the bears you can still see in Detroit today, the cub's parents, Nuka and Suka. 19-year-old Nuka originally came to Detroit in 2011, from March 2022 until March 2023, Nuka took a vacation an hour south of Detroit at the Toledo Zoo, where he fathered a second set of twin cubs before returning home to Detroit. His mate is 11-year-old Suka, who was coincidentally born in Toledo. After a short stay at the Henry Villas Zoo, Suka moved to Detroit in 2018. Following the departure of their cubs, Hopefully, Nuka and Suka will once again be adding to the polar bear population in the future. Between 20 to 30,000 polar bears still roam the Arctic Circle. However, these beautiful white bears are endangered due to the pressures from our slowly warming planet. I mentioned earlier that polar bears spend their summers resting and fasting, but in many areas, these summers are growing longer and the ice is melting sooner which puts increased strain on the bears to survive. With the future uncertain, we should make sure we appreciate and celebrate the majesty of the polar bear while we can, which the Arctic Ring of Life certainly does.
Two years after it was built, the Arctic Ring of Life was recognized with the 2003 Exhibit Award for Significant Achievement. And John Wasner, co-author of the 2008 Traveler's Guide to America's Best Zoos, named it as the second best zoo exhibit in the nation. While many amazing exhibits have been built since then, between its interpretive elements, innovative design, and unforgettable visitor experiences, the Arctic Ring of Life is still among the greatest zoo exhibits ever built.